First thing you gotta do is remove the seat, which is there's a latch in the back, you just click it and pull it out. So after you remove the seat, you gotta remove these covers. Now they only snap in here, that's the only snap, and then they hook. So you have to pull them up because they hook behind here, and you can see it or not, and also behind this here, like so. And then in here they hook into this groove, this groove and this groove. So you just basically lift it up a little bit and then lift this side up and this comes off. Same thing on the other side, they're pretty much identical. Except this one has a hole for the, uh, for the petcock. Next you need to remove these 10 millimeter screws on both sides. Don't remove this one yet, you will later. And then you're gonna need 4 millimeter Allen wrench to remove these two on top to take this plastic cover off and then you have to take the uh, the uh, fuel cap off. Next you need to remove this little cover here that uh, holds the uh, air, air filter. You gotta pop it out because this is in the way you cannot remove the tank. So that's just easy. Four clamps and it's off. Next you remove all these little bushings and washers from here and bolts. And then you disconnect this fuel line here because there's a padcock. Also the uh, the padcock here, that just pops right out. It's just pushed in. And then you can uh, lift the whole tank off. So since I have the tank out, I might as well drain all the old fuel out of it. Because this fuel is probably two years old. Well, I've been adding fresh fuel, but there's also some old fuel. So it's a good idea to drain it. Not only that, clean the tank. So you just uh, shake it really well. Make sure all the deposits, everything. All the debris is kind of floating around and then you you dump it out. Yeah, I had about, uh, I would say two gallons of fuel in here. But it's, this, it's old, old fuel. And then the old fuel, I'm going to dump it in the car because I have 10 gallons of fresh fuel in it. So once you mix it up, it, it won't make any difference. Yeah, when I drain a tank, this fell out. Little paper round thing. It's probably one of those, you know, when you get a fuel additive or a fuel treatment. You know, you unscrew it and it's got the little paper thing. That was inside of the tank. So that's why I say drain, drain the tank because you never know what's in there. <laughs> could be rocks, could be sand, could be paper, gaskets, whatever, you know. It doesn't belong in there. Next, you gotta remove the uh, four zip ties that hold this rubber thing. And then it's unhooked here on these two hooks. And then you can remove this. And that exposes this whole thing. Now you can get to this cap and the other cap. So before you do any valve adjustment and taking the covers off, you gotta wash the quad really well. And when I say wash it, I mean wash the engine. Take everything off and wash the engine really good, especially around the caps. And anything around here because you don't want to be dumping any dirt when you take the covers off and shove your fingers in there to adjust it. You don't want any sand or mud or dirt fall down in the engine. So basically that's what I, I washed it really good with simple green pressure washed it. I'm gonna pull it back in the garage. I pulled it out here so I can wash it. You see my whole driveway. It's almost dark. The whole driveway is wet. Uh, so yeah now I can pull the quad back in and I'll let it dry a little bit and then we'll adjust the valves on it because what happens is they actually tighten up as you break the engine in they get tighter and tighter and when you got a combustion inside actually the valve is a little bit open it's got a gap and then it blows the uh, co co combustion gases back into an intake valve and ruins them so it's a really 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 important thing to adjust these valves okay guys so the uh, quad set for two days after I washed the uh, whole engine bay here, you know, I let it dry really well. And like I said, you want to wash it before you do anything so you don't put any junk in the engine. So next thing you know, you got to remove this cover here and everything to get to this bolt. And spin the engine into the top dead center position, which you'll see a mark in there. I don't know if this light will pick it up or not. This camera will pick it up. So then you want to check your valve adjustment. And basically what you're looking for is the gap in between. I measured this gap and it was one and a half thousand. And the spec calls for two and a half to four thousand, three point nine, but that's four thousand. You're talking microns here, so you can't, there's no filler. They only jump one thousand at a time, these, these filler gauges. So you're looking between 
two and a half and four thousand now you want to keep it on the high side always because what happens with the valves as they wear in as the engine breaks in and wears in they get tighter and tighter so when you adjust the valves you want to be always on the high side on the very maximum high side because as the engine you know you put more miles on it it's going to keep dropping and dropping till it gets too tight then it's time to adjust them again so anyways I'm allowed to put 4000 in so what you do is you take a filler gauge hopefully you can see the numbers here this is 5000 and the one underneath is 4000 so you want to make sure that 5000 one does not fit in there you can't jam it in there and then you take a 4000 one and you can slide it in there see just like so you feel a little bit of uh, tension in there but that's about it so again 5000 should not go in and 4000 should slide with some tension on it then you know you got a perfect uh, valve gap and like I said as the engine wears in this is gonna tighten 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 so you want to keep it always on the high side so anyways that's uh, that's on the intake what's really nice about this quad is the way it's designed for valve adjustment I mean this this is just beautiful it's got these caps that you remove specifically for the valves for adjustment it's just like my wife's uh, scooter Yamaha that she had when I had to do the valve adjustment it was exactly the same thing as what you see in here which is just a beautiful thing on my motorcycle to adjust the valve on my motorcycle here which is 250 by the way that's 450 that's 250 and this goes 120 miles an hour with me and my wife so the 450 is such an overkill but hey this is America everything's big anyways to adjust the uh, valve on this bike you gotta remove this whole cover to remove this whole cover you gotta take everything off you gotta take the radiator drain the fluid take the exhaust off take the bolts off drop the engine down take the cover off I mean this is a whole day job compared to this thing I mean the, the only time you spend is taking this crap off here the tank and all the side panels and stuff which is just a couple bolts here and there it's such an easy job I mean uh, oh, I love Yamaha for that they make it easy on you because that's something you gotta do that's just regular maintenance that sadly most people will never do they just they just ride those quads till they destroy the engine and they never think about adjusting the valves which you have to get it done now this one is 1300 miles and I put it on a high side so I think it's gonna be good till about four or five thousand miles which is a lot for a quad I mean to put that kind of miles on a quad you gotta be riding a lot and of course I'll check all the fluids before I assemble everything I think the fluids are all fine uh, yeah and the coolant is fine you can see it through the tank and then uh, well I'll move to that later but I'm sure it's fine because I changed the oil when I uh, <clears throat> When I bought this quad 70 miles ago, I put new oil in it. Put a rag here. So it should be fine. Yep. It's only the tip should be in oil and that's what you have. You put in towards the light. See? The tip should be dipped in oil and that's exactly and it's nice golden oil. It's mobile one. I as you know guys, I only use mobile one. Nothing else ever in my garage. So let me tighten this thing so yeah, oil level is good. Let me check the coolant before I uh, move to the exhaust side. Like I said, when it comes to mobile one, everything is mobile one here. And this, this is the oil I used for the quad and my motorcycles. So, uh, as you can see, everything is mobile one. <laughs> That's, yeah, I just believe in that. Any kind of lubricant is everything is mobile one with me. So let me put this cap back on and we'll, we'll, oh, we'll check the coolant. Hold on. Well, I'll put the cap back on first. Okay, so we're gonna test the coolant now. Now I kept this quad in the heated garage and the previous owner did it too, so freezing was never an issue, but you still wanna test it. So you wanna draw it in there. Whoa. That's good enough. I don't know if you can see it from the angle, but that's your coolant, so it's it's perfect. I got some water here, so I'm soaking the air filter because these you actually wash them. They're not like your car car air filter where you replace them. These are just a sponge, 
and you have to wash them so I just, I'm just soaking them then I'll take them upstairs and wash them with uh, the greaser and stuff I'm just soaking all the parts from the air filter box because it gets filthy I clean the box as good as I can that's always dirty in here because obviously it's like a big vacuum cleaner <laughs> all the air gets sucked, sucked in here and the filter stops us from going any further so this box is always dirty that's why I got all the parts soaking in there. So anyways, coolant is good. Okay, so the top I got the cover back on. Unfortunately, I can't film the bottom one, the exhaust one, because there's no room. I'm going to put my camera in there. I can barely fit. Hopefully you can see anything in there. Uh, I don't know if you can see the valve or not, but basically... All I can do is uh, put my hand in there, so I have to use a mirror in here to adjust this valve, so I can't film anything. Well, hopefully you guys can see this. I'll try to hold it with. <laughs> There's really no room here. I don't know even where I'm pointing. But this is 7. 7 goes pretty loose. 8 pre goes tight. I don't know if you can see this or not, even if you can see the numbers, but I got everything I got everything tightened up and I got 8,000 between 7 and 8, which is the top number here. It's it's just, it's hard to get in there. Not, not easy. This one is so easy, but the other one, obviously, you have to kind of struggle. It's still not bad. It's still nothing like my motorcycle, my goodness. Yeah, also my motorcycle is 250 cc and me and my wife will go 120 miles an hour and this is 450 and I see all these new quads 700 to 1000 cc only in America you know? <laughs> on the uh, exhaust cover make sure this little thing is facing up it's basically collecting oil and drips down right on the valve so don't put it upside down like that there's I, I don't think there's a indication anywhere it should be up or down but unfortunately on this one there's no marking of any kind but it has to go like that with this up otherwise it'll hit the valve if you do it the other way plus it will not drip the oil right on the valve where it, like it should so just something to remember yeah that's, that's the uh, rear differential I just topped it off make sure it's spilling over that's when you know it's level so this is the front differential. Again, I tapped it off till it's spilling over. So you see the level. I just put a few drops in there. It's it's pretty much was already at the level. I maybe put a eighth of an ounce, not not even, just a few drops. So because all the seals, everything's good, nothing's leaking. So that's it. That's the last step. This is the front differential. I just checked the fluid. I just checked the rear too. Everything's good. Okay, so I have to just wait for the filter and all these parts to dry. Because they're still wet. And then I'll uh, assemble this whole thing. And I'll put this note here with the date and mileage. When was the last time the uh, the valves were adjusted. I'll put it in the little Ziploc bag and trap it here beneath the uh, tank. So if somebody's taking it apart, they can see when the valves were done. That's just something I always do. You never know how many owners this thing's gonna have. So that's it. I checked all the fluids, uh, tapped off everything. It, it really didn't need anything. It didn't burn. Doesn't burn any oil. Coolant was good. All the differentials were good. So now the valves adjusted. Uh, filter. I washed it really good. It's still got some black marks, but I can't wash that off. It's it's pretty clean. So I let it dry, and assemble this whole thing and. And we'll be done.